Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Dylan. And welcome to the season finale of Adaptation Station, mm -hmm. the show where we review books and their movie adaptations. One of us reads the book and then watches the movie. The other one watches the movie, then reads the book. And then we let you know what our recommendations are for which order gives you the best experience. Today we're talking about The Langoliers, the story novella from Stephen King's collection Four Past Midnight and the TV movie adaptation. You read it first. Can you tell me more did, about that? I did, yeah. Um, the Langoliers um, is, you could call it a short story. I think it's even billed as a, as a novella as um, it appears in the collection of novellas Four Past Midnight by Stephen King, published in 1990. Um, and the three other uh, stories that appear in there are um, Secret Window, Secret Garden, uh, The Library Policeman, and The Sundog. Mm -hmm. um, Secret Window, Secret Garden also has a movie adaptation. Yeah. Um, the Langoliers uh, tells a story of um, a group of passengers taking a flight uh, from L.A. to Boston, and um, th uh, they wake up at one point into the flight and everyone else is gone on the plane yeah there's like 10 of them left something yeah. like that yeah yeah interesting mystery and they have to figure that out from there yeah and that story uh the langoliers was turned into they call it actually a tv mini series right yeah two um, parts right yeah but the definition's up for debate. Like, is this a short story novella? Is this a miniseries or a long movie? Because it was turned into a miniseries in 1995, five years after the book. Uh, and it originally aired in two episodes. Each episode was an hour and a half long. So you could call it two short movies or one long three-hour movie. Mm -hmm. I watched it on DVD where it just puts them both together with no yeah. break in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it flows seamlessly like one long movie yeah and of course it follows the same plot that same mystery and i'll tell you some of the cast members um it stars david morse as the pilot uh who you will recognize from the green mile movie yeah. mm -hmm. i was excited to see him there uh bronson pinchot is craig toomey there's mark Lindsay chapman as the british guy uh, Kate Maberly plays Dinah. Uh, then there's Patricia Wettig and Dean Stockwell as the teacher and the mystery writer, respectively, to name a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the book and the movie. Uh, I'm interested to hear your opinion as someone that read it first. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the story, Stephen King? Well, Kings? yeah, and I had read this before a long time in high school. Um, mm -hmm. I had read Four Past Midnight, um, and this is one of the ones that I definitely remembered was in this, um, and because it really is one of my favorite Stephen King stories or novellas or whatever, his mm -hmm. shorter um, stuff, uh, I think it just races along, at, in to me, in contrast to The Dark Half, mm -hmm. The Langoliers is Stephen King at his best, condensed, action, action, things are happening the whole time. Yeah, they spend a lot of time talking about stuff but it's not too there's not too much dwelt upon and the, like s stuff happens in this there's drama you know mm -hmm. s stuff that happens like once they get to the airport and everything um uh things really kick off so really uh and it really gives me the same kind of vibes as the stand mm. uh, it is written around the same time as the stand also okay. it's written around the same time as uh, the dark half though so uh, who knows about that but um, really I really like it I really okay. like the story interesting now I'm worried that maybe what happened to me mm. is kind of what happened with Michael Crichton because I watched the movie first um, and I enjoy it it's entertaining it's kind of kind of cheesy the acting is yeah. not that great but uh, it's fun it's like a very long Twilight Zone episode. You know, I also <laughs> wrote down that it's that it's kind of like the Twilight Zone, but yeah. yeah, I think it's it's a little too long. Um, yeah, it could have been shorter because I mean the story's not one of Stephen King's longer stories. No, Why uh -uh. they make a three hour thing out of it? Yeah, um, the first part, uh, all the parts where they're in the plane, boring. 
uh, in the movie. I did like when Dinah first uh, wakes up and oh. she can't find anyone. Oh, uh-huh. I actually thought the tension was pretty good in the movie where she's like feeling around. She can't find anyone. No one's responding to her. And then she finds the wig and uh-huh. like screams. That part actually got me in the movie. Um, but yeah, it's more like maybe the later stuff or how it drags on. And of course, the the visuals are uh, nothing to write. The visuals about. don't stand up. It's very cheesy <laughs> in the movie. Uh, it's kind of it's it's funny. It's funny to yeah. watch it. You know, some of those parts, like all the time when they're in, in the airport, I think is fine. It's good yeah. uh, in terms of like looking at it as an old um, Twilight Zone type yeah. of thing. It's going to be campy. It's going to have bad visuals like an old monster movie or something. But sometimes yeah. it's fun to watch those as part of the time they're from. Although this does kind of come off as maybe something from old, old, older than when this was actually made. Yeah, this is the 90s, but it seems like it. it could have been 70s in style yeah. of <laughs> Yeah, of it's movie. strange because like the plane itself looks animated the whole time yeah right um but, it's very early computer animation yeah. <laughs> going on in this but movie. it's it's not as bad as when you finally see the langoliers <laughs> and uh it, it pops me out of it because it's probably the worst cgi i've ever seen <laughs> it's in a movie. Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and like it wouldn't be so bad if it's like it looks like from the time like video games yeah from that time looked like that but it's different when all of a PlayStation One game looks like yeah. that compared to like live action real actors, and then that thing comes in. Yeah, that uh, I don't know. And if if they just kind of blurred by, it would be better than when they actually look at it for a long time. Like when Craig Craig Toomey's like, "Oh no!" and it like shows the Langolier for a long time yeah. just chomping. It's like we don't <laughs> need to see it. Just like let it blur by. It would look better. Yeah. Um. But despite that, I mean, I really like the the story and the mystery of it. And I did like the story more. I like that the story on paper does a lot more to explain um, a lot of what's going on at yeah. multiple points in it. Yeah, because they do have a lot of discussions, a yeah. bit more discussions in the mm-hmm. story about figuring out what could be going on. And f- for how long this is, I don't know how they somehow, they didn't do it quite th- right. Yeah, because it's, uh, like I said, a shorter written thing in terms of Stephen King. Yeah. And they had three hours to have lots yeah. of discussion. They have the same characters, the same mystery writer who goes through his uh, mm-hmm. deductive reasoning. Yeah. But yeah, in the book, they have a f- few important things that they left out, like the discussion of other disappearances, like uh, the Mother Celeste ship, mm-hmm. where the whole crew disappears, but their things are left there, yeah. and a smoking pipe, yeah, uh, and the Bermuda Triangle. Mm-hmm. And um, I also liked some of the experiments are in the movie. Um, the simple stuff like the food tastes bad and the beer doesn't work until they're back on the plane. Yeah, uh, But... I liked in the book when uh, Albert plays his violin oh, and it sounds yeah, bad yeah, yeah. until you get closer to it and they realize it's the air mm-hmm. is not conducting it. Yeah, they didn't really explain that in the movie, did they? They just, they talked about it with the like, the, sound sh- the of sounds the, of the shoes yeah. on the, you know, but they didn't say the air is not, con- they didn't get really specific yeah. with what is going on, which was interesting. Yeah, in that's book, what I felt like was, the... was missing after reading this. The violin part really got me like, oh, yeah, that's such a cooler explanation of like how this other time that they traveled to works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they explain a lot of that stuff and better that's here. So, so much of what I like about the book is it's it isn't um, it's sci fi in a way, but it's not super sciencey. It's not super based in science fact. That's true. But yeah. but it's it is like a twilight zone thing about it's kind of just like a what if, but yeah. it does a really good job of making everything that he, that can that he can fit around this mm-hmm. thing that's improbable and it sucks you in even though it's like well that's not that can't happen, you know when you think about it, but it feels yeah. fun and good, you know, mm-hmm. uh interesting. Yeah, that's uh what makes it not one of my favorite Stephen King stories is I generally don't like the ones that are a little more out there Mm. or like on the fantasy end of things that he does sometimes. Mm. Um, I liked it, but yeah, I 
I, uh, it gets a little spacey sometimes with, uh, just the concept, but it's still, Mm -hmm. still pretty interesting. Uh, I was wondering the whole time reading the story, how he's going to describe the Langoliers after seeing it in the movie. I'm like, how did they come up with that visual? And uh, it is very strange the way they're described yeah, in the story. It's, he says it's like a beach ball and yeah. it's like undulating. And they yeah, did a good job the way, yeah, they're red and black. And he says they jump and they yeah. crisscross. No, they, they I did think they did as good a job as they could have done yeah. in what it was, 1995. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really, um, they could have done some movie magic to not make it stand out as much, like you're saying, yeah. not show them directly. Yeah. Just kind of whiz I think them that by. That was a mistake. Um, I, yeah, I, reading it, I always, you know, even from in high school, I pictured them basically like chain chomps yeah, from yeah. Mario, but, you know. <laughs> going along I eating like that them i did like in the the book how it uh like slowly eats to me but oh yeah they they just didn't have the budget clearly yeah, that would for be this to like to eat his legs that. off and he's still yeah. running on his stumps and yeah. then they you know but that's it just gets to also just the description is more interesting because it's they're not like monsters eating something. It's just like it more like it, it deletes disappears, it. Disappears. Yeah. yeah, it just goes through it and it ceases to exist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, yeah. He eats his feet off and it's instantly cauterized. He's not like yeah. bleeding or mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why he can run on the stumps. Yeah. yeah. And it does more of that describing how it it's eating you know, all the stuff. Like it eats the top of a mountain when they're flying. They say it eat the top of a mountain. It sinks, it sinks in like it's end. a volcano. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some pretty interesting description in the story, and I think I might have liked it more if I hadn't watched the movie because it is a mystery. Like yeah. it's it's about figuring out what's yeah. going on. Uh-huh. It did. I can understand. It's not gonna like make you want to go. Oh, I need to figure out what's what. Where are they? What is going on? Yeah, because you already know. And it is a very faithful adaptation. It is. Yeah, it follows it very closely. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else to say about it, or do you want to reveal our scores? No, I think we can reveal our scores here. All right, you read it first. I did. I read it first, and I give the novella a nine. It sounded like ten. you were going to rate it high. Yeah, that is very high. I give it a nine. Like I said, it's one of my favorite. Um, mm. And then, uh, and then I watched the movie. I gave it a six. Okay. Interesting, because I watched the movie first and also gave it a six. Oh, lockstep. Yeah. Uh, however, I guess that ruined my enjoyment of the book. I liked it better, but I gave the novella a 6.7. Okay. Uh, definitely better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now it's time to combine our scores to see what our recommendation is together. All right. Our average score for the novella is 7.85. It's a good score. It is a good score. Um, I feel like I might be underrating it, uh, but that's a good combined score, yeah. I think. And, and the then, movie, of course, we gave it both a six. 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 Stays a six. Um, looking at how the critics rate it, uh, I looked on Goodreads. I don't want to look at the rating for Four Past Midnight. So I'm looking at a rating of actually the audiobook of just the Lango Lears, narrated by Willem Dafoe. Uh, and that has a user average rating of 3.92 out of 5. That's very close to our score, right? 7.84, yeah. almost exactly. Properly rated. Properly rated. Say. Yeah. Uh, however, the movie, or TV miniseries, has a 50%, according to the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 46 according to the audience. S- slightly underrated. Slightly underrated. Yeah. Not too far below ours, but... Yeah, we think it's a little bit better than that. It's yeah. still interesting. Uh, okay, now it's time for our final recommendations. Which one should you do first? What do you think? Easy one for me on this one. Read it Read it first. Read it first, then watch the movie. Uh, easy for me as well. I will say read it first and then also watch the movie. I think I might have enjoyed it more that way. So I would recommend reading it before watching it. Uh, And now let's see where these land on our overall ranked list of now 48 things. Uh, 48. Yep, 48. Um, The Langoliers story actually cracks the top 10 um, at 7.85. Nice. um, Right under NW, the book. Cool. And above the three-way tie of the Green Mile movie, the Sphere movie, and the Bullet Train book. (laughs) (laughs) And the movie must be quite a bit lower. The movie's quite a bit lower on the list. Down number 39 here. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty low. 
um, right, right below Love in the Time of Cholera, the yeah. book. Um, and above the last dual movie. Okay. That makes sense. And if you're looking for something else to read, we have some books available also that you can find in the description below. And we're reading another book next year. I was about to tease the next episode. <laughs> but no, the next episode, stay tuned, we'll have um, uh, an episode where we kind of recap uh, mm. season three um, and a, probably a little bit of the first two seasons, just everything we've done so far and um, uh, give a little retrospective on that. Yeah, so this was our finale for season three. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around. We'll do a video where we reflect on all these things that we've read and watched the past three years uh, and then we'll start getting ready for season four. So yeah. again, comment below any recommendations you have for books that have been turned into movies or maybe even movies that have been turned into books. We could do those too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we have lots of ideas we want to do, but when we get recommendations, we always move those up the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would appreciate that. And as for the Langoliers viewer, you tell me which is better. The book or the movie let us know in the comments below like this video subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to tune into you can click another video now thank you bye